starting us off in the bottom right hand side of group b of the dou cup our first map of the day is golden wall and our red zerg is soup up against the blue terran in the bottom left hand side from team liquid give it up if you're cheering on you thermal first map of this best of three as we get this underway and have a look to see how things will be going what will these two bring for us today will you thermal have some tricks up his sleeve is he gonna play a bit of mech a bit of bio let's see what you thermal has planned for us here as we get this started up overlord of sue is making its way out up into the center of the map if the extra drones coming into play in the hatchery on the natural expansion as well so again that hatchery down on the natural and the overlords continuing to move out onto the map and i mean checking for this one checking for kind of some of the proxy locations you might sometimes see um is in the end just going to end up going quite far up and then across obviously you thermal choosing not to proxy here but don't be surprised if you thermal in a group of four zerg players is gonna i mean if four zergs in a terran there's probably going to be a few proxy racks from you thermal somewhere along the way in this group interestingly we actually only see one you thermal matchup today the majority of you thermals games will happen tomorrow in the second half of the matches so this is actually the only bit of youth thermal we see today and then again we get to see more from him tomorrow and that will be very fun to see how that all plays out of course lots of you know while we do a lot of the zvz's today we have a lot of the tvz's tomorrow so it's almost like today is like a warm-up for tomorrow's matches which i can get behind there's also some great matches in uh in this first uh, day of games as well so don't worry about that Honestly, some of these ZVZs today are pretty great. And then, I mean, we've even got, like I said, TY Bly. That's bound to be a bit of a mess. Um, who knows what Bly's going to come out with. And then you've got TY Solar a little bit further down the line as well. As Zerglin Speed is on the way in the spawning pool. And the Reaper arriving from you. Thermal is going to come in and it will start to fight these Zerglings. Trying to get some damage done. Looks like he was trying to get pretty deep on the mineral line. That's a dead Zergling though. So it's a little bit of a slow pullback from Sue just there. As you do see the... Reaper going up, checking if there's a third hatchery, which there isn't, so no third hatch just yet. Sue still has two workers on gas, which you could argue is a little bit more than usual, perhaps looking for a very fast glare here, and something very aggressive as Euthermal just goes triple CC off the one gas, so three bases just like that. I mean, that's super fast third base uh, before Hellions come down or anything, and obviously that's even going to be too many minerals to then afford Hellions right away, so this is the greediest it gets from Euthermal's point of view. Because he drops the starport now before Hellions as well. So this is really greedy from you, Thermal. But, I mean, he's kind of getting away with it because Sue's not doing much about it just yet. I mean, there's the lair very quickly on the way up from Sue. So maybe a bit faster than even just going into quick Mutalisks. This could just be like two base Mutalisks, but it's not going to be that three base Mutalisks, which you see a lot of, of course. I mean, you don't see Sue able to move down the ramp and onto the map just yet. So the grenade goes down, pops a couple of queens back, the few lings. We'll continue to patrol and this drone just moving out the front as the reaper goes around the top side and the overlord is going to move itself to take to the take itself to the high ground here in the next few moments lair coming up the third hatchery coming in i'm just going to be seeing the grenade going down as ling's trying to chase that reaper reaper taking a few shots of damage but not too much in the end again the extra couple of hellions just finishing up this viking going to pop out of the starport and the orbital command is also going to be up in just a few moments times so again this orbital command up and running getting all of that economy flowing with the bane that's down and again nothing off the ledge just yet about to hit 200 gas so that should be the spire so there's a pretty fast spire then obviously you go into that lair very early you take the third a bit later because you thermal had the reaper out in front you can see you thermal wants a scout and he's going to get to see the spire so that's really good for him this tells him right away this is not a Nidus attack or anything, right? You don't have to be as cautious about some of the aggressive things that could come out. Although if this was a Nidus, he actually has the Viking. So his build is pretty well covered against what this could be. By going for the Viking, you deny Overlord, so you deny a lot of the Nidus potential. The follow-up goes into a Liberator, then you've got a Viking and a Lib, which, you know, yes, some harassment, but B, they can also be used to help defend Mutas if needed. And then, of course, on the ground, you've got a plenty of Hellions, so... Yeah, it's a nice setup from you, Thermal. Pretty much as safe as you can be off a fast 3cc. Obviously, now he knows he doesn't need to go into any uh, siege tank production or anything as well based on the scout he got with the Reapers. So, 
He just goes straight into extra racks. The engineering bays actually were before the second and third racks. So this really is greed, greed, and greed again. Well, second and third racks were like four seconds before, two or three seconds before, maybe even. So that's very fast double engineering base. He's going to have really quick upgrades here. As the Hellions get through on the other side of the map, and they are going to start roasting some drones. That's five workers already down. And you double. He's getting to work with the Liberator elsewhere, picking up kills as well. He's going to get a few more shots at the end here. Low health drones, low health Hellions. Liberator in the main has gone unanswered. And then he has picked up, what, 13 kills? It's now going to cancel one of the Mutalists that was on the way up. The Queen's stroke. Well, the Mutas can at least chase that down, but that's 17 workers lost early, and New Thermal gets a fabulous start here off against Sue. I mean, not only has this been a really greedy opener for New Thermal, but now this has been a really greedy opener and fantastic damage. A shame not to get this Overlord and instead to fight these Mutalisks, just because he could have killed the Overlord. He will not kill a Mutalisk, and Mutalisks, of course, do have pretty good regen. Uh, Liberators, that's going to get a Queen. I was going to say, could have targeted down some drones, and maybe that would have been more worthwhile, but hey, at least you got the Queen. Wasn't a transfusion there to uh, go off and to really help save it. I mean, if there was, then he didn't use it. So, yeah, Sue is not having a great start. And behind all of this, Euthermal has the third base in position now already on the gold. And he's got Marines to stim in. And he, what, loses an SCV? Not even. Wow, not even an SCV on the gold base. Well, now Sue goes to the natural. The missile turret here about to finish. This is the issue. You're on three Mutalisks. You're now on two Mutalisks. And this final couple of meters already beaten up a little bit. Two meters lost, and of course, you just lose so many drones, you can't afford the meters you want to afford when that Spire first finishes. And now Sue's trying to make sure he gets the upgrades correctly, but yeah, Euthermal should be absolutely running away with this first game of the series. Sue is in a monumental amount of trouble. He is so far behind from workers lost to meters doing absolutely nothing. I mean, that's huge, right? When your meters don't do any damage here. That's an entire early game investment you've made. You chose to delay the third mine gas for the faster lair. And all of this, all of that spent, for what? You forced a couple of missile turrets? You didn't kill a single SCV? I mean, at this point, the meters have been a liability. They've been a cost that hasn't done anything. They've been a cost that's just eaten away from things Sue could have had otherwise. And obviously, again, part of this is because... You lose those drones. You can't afford all the Mutalisks you want to afford. If you can't afford all those Mutalisks, you get to the stage where you don't have enough of them up. If you don't have enough of them up, well, they just don't, you know, it's much more difficult to get the damage done that you're looking for. Is I love this from Euthermal. Just one drop around the top side. Eight Marines that will probably pull some units out of position. I mean, just gives them a chance to move forward and clean up some creep here as the Mutas. Still being annoying. I mean, they finally found five SCVs and they're going to get a couple more. This edge of the gold is definitely the vulnerable point, hence why Euthermal's trying to get this missile turret going. But again, he's taking this damage while cleaning up a lot of the creep spread, and he's got this drop in the top right, which is about to stim in and hit the fourth base. Just as everything is kind of, you know, focusing on the center, this lift up was a little bit questionable, though. The muters were right there, and obviously that was less than ideal. And the Marines get the fourth base. That would be a nice pickoff to really slow Sue down, because it did cost Euthermal 20 supply in the middle of the map, and that is a little bit of a concern, right? That was two full medivacs, and you're not meant to lose two full medivacs of units clearing out creep, which is basically what happened. At the very least, these units should sit back and trade a little bit. I mean, this medivac parks in the top right, and yes, it's going to die, but look at this. The Mutalists are all the way in that top right corner. They're so far away from coming back across the map to hit you thermal once again. As you will see, our couple of Zerglings going to split up and make their way further forward once again. We don't mind burrowing up to the top side. Overlord spreading around, and as we see the drilling floors coming up, I think Thermal's going to get that uh, wooden mine switch well underway for himself then, and obviously that makes playing against this Ling Bane style and Muters that much easier. And again, the Muters have found their favorite position once again, the right side of this gold base, where this time they're actually going to get the actual missile turret in the center of this mineral line too. Now we'll get himself a siege tank and Sue. Doing good damage with these meters. Ten workers killed, but a drop in the main and one small Euthermal gets in a strong spot. So he responds with seven worker kills of his own. Plenty of lings will go down. And again, you force the Mutalists to pull back home. And by forcing the Mutalists home, you just basically deny them from doing further damage. He's even going to get a Mutalist. I mean, now it's even more worthwhile. He's going to get two meters. Does he get a third? He does. Three meters. And then you've got to the top side. Drones long distance mining being caught as well. And it's the single drops which have maybe been the most effective thing for Euthermal in the last three or four minutes. Obviously, the earlier game all about that Hellion Liberator. But now, 
just the one or two drops they've just done so much and he targets down some banelings here as well and you thermal just buying himself so much time a game this has been what over a minute where the middlers have not been on the terran side of the map it's given you thermal time to rebuild these missile turrets fourth base is up safely he's got a good amount of units ready to go back at home as well once again just looking fantastic you thermal here through and through has a ton more banelings will morph in and I mean, Sue tries to make the next step, which is that infestation pit, help him into hive tech, adrenal glands, and three, three melee upgrades. But as he makes that step, Euthermal, well, Euthermal's already pretty well set up, right? I mean, he's going to start his own three, three. He's again basically maxed out here. He's got a ton of wooden mines in play. Don't tell me this is, okay, this time it's a wooden mine drop on the bottom right. Again, single medevac of units, whether it's marines or mines. Are having great effect here as the scans go down it cleans up a lot of the centralized creep spread this means you get up to this ramp very easily off of creep and then you get into this base to push and that's obviously a pretty big deal too although this is the base that's too prioritized i mean if you take the gold base here i think you thermal should be able to deny that easily with a drop on the south side of the minerals and then you don't really have much to clean that up you have to send the muters once again yeah, I don't mind what you thermal is doing again he's cleaning this creep it means again that getting up on top of this base is nicely and easily done and once you do that that helps you out a lot as the mutas are going to find their favorite base yet again this time a Thor left behind to help defend though with a couple of missile turrets will be enough to scare Sue away and what's scary about going down here again you know as Sue right now is that you're in a position where you're going to run into such a deep kind of field of widow mines they just never really stop, so you can have widow mines for days going off on your army. As you thermal forces an army to respond to the top right, he'll come in over here, lift up, just pull back, killed another seven drones already. The mutas are gonna dive in, looking for the Thor. The widow mine will go off. That softens the mutas up a little bit. Widow mine goes off on the overseer though, and that hurts the marines. You thermal having to split away here. A few of the marines at the top going down as well, and the medevacs get cleaned up too. You thermal is going to be pushed back. Zoo with money in the bank. He needs to spend that money on the hive tech, really, right? I think he needs to get high. Well, he's got hive. He needs to go ultra cap, and he needs to get adrenal glands. That's what all of that money's going to be for. Three three as well. If he gets caught on Ling Bay Muta, this is not likely to go well for him the longer that this game goes. One of the medevacs out down the bottom side as we see you thermal. Readying himself for base number five. Now, this base number five is where you really start to let the Zerg get into a position where run buys are very powerful because you get this base up here and the run by potential on that base is huge compared to the others and just difficulty of getting units there to defend against it so i think that will be a major feature here very shortly as soon we'll see this next medevac up in the top right how many times has one medevac caused so much chaos over there is uh, this was an attempt to run by the goal but you thermal as well set up here that's the sort of setup he's going to need on the top left if he wants to make sure that fifth base goes up without too many complications. As he gets in, just picks off a few units already. Some units down to the low ground, Widow Mines. Actually out of range to really do that job, but the Banelings don't connect on anything. There's that drop again, Sue. Too much going on on the map. He doesn't realize it's on the way over. So this extractor goes down. These Zerglings trying to run in. These Marines just stand there as a blockade and they just stop any of these Lings from getting on top of the Marines. We're just gonna go diving into the main base now as well, so straight into the main the mutas starting to pick away at this rax rax goes down reactor goes down mutas still up overhead there's going to be a wood mine picked off also i'm just going to be seeing the rest of these lings moving through and marines doing a decent job against this Banes crash in to hit a lot of these marines 20 workers killed so far as our marines continue to pick away at this mineral line 20 workers already fallen as the rest of our mutas pull back over the right side, gonna go flying in. Medivac, Marines, Marauder. Definitely something to uh, clean up, but they get the gold hatchery. That means that Sue is basically looking at this base up here for five bases, and that's already low, and Karen used in position to realistically get a kill on it fairly soon. I mean, all it takes is a couple units dropping here, stimming in before the Ling Bane reacts. Ethan has so many units at home as well. Now, we're about to hit that kind of, you know moment of the game where things flip a little bit though ultralisks are about to pop and with the ultralisks about to pop you're finally at a stage of this game as to where maybe you actually have a bit more of a sturdy army to take some of these fights and it might just slow you thermal down a bit as this big fight happens already i feel like Sue 
This is not the time you want to be running into this, but maybe he just feels like U-Thermal hadn't reinforced enough. As Stu is going to stay maxed out as he starts three more Ultras and 28 more Lings. I mean, Widowmind's being set off by Overseers, and it kind of feels like Sue. Does he have enough to push forward? Probably not, because there's just a couple Ultras and Mutalisks. Okay, but Sue pushes U-Thermal away, and I'm not sure where U-Thermal's money really is. I mean, resources lost is pretty even. That was just a really bad fight for U-Thermal. I didn't think Sue had such a good fight there, especially because the Ultras were still mostly in pro production. Wow, okay, well, that was really bad for U-Thermal. Now, if he gets a few moments to rebuild, then brilliant, but will Sue give him that time? I mean, Sue's already maxed out, so what would Sue be waiting for? Not much, really. I mean, this is what U-Thermal needs, a few drops like this to buy a bit more time himself. These units get pulled to the upper right again. Anything you can do is U-Thermal to give yourself that extra little bit of time before Sue goes maxed out against your 150 supply. I actually think Sue might have uh, turned this around with that last fight. That was actually so devastating. So, so devastating. There's a few more Banelings morphing in the center. Bling Bane Ultra continuing over to the left. A few more drones going down. Here comes Sue running up this ramp. Lings run in. Liberator gets Siege, and we're going to be seeing Sue push back away down through the center of the map. Anabolic Synthesis on the way out as well. Bling Bane Ultra continues to set up in the middle of the map here. Just going to be seeing the Overseer continue to build. Well, extra Spore Crawlers on the way in. It feels as though Euthermal, though, is getting maxed out, and that's why Sue's army once the game becomes that little bit weaker. Euthermal was also, I didn't mention it, but he was also setting up into extra starports before that really bad fight, so that fight may have just caught him kind of mid-transition as well. He's going to turn these libs around. He's actually going to let the libs just deal with the Mutalisks, but does he have enough to fight off the Ultras? The libs can obviously siege once the Mutas go down, but the Mutas are still alive here. The Ultras should not try and continue through there. That was obviously not the position to keep on fighting in. Run by in the top left will get 18 workers, so... You mentioned that this base was going to be one that gets hit by run buys rather easily, and it will be. Now, I don't think Euthermal has to worry too much about this having been a success so far. I think the fact that he's alive is already good for him. He's got a base still alive to take it. He's got other CCs around. 18 SCVs is never fun to lose, don't get me wrong, but I think you can excuse him for losing some workers there while Sue was about to make a game-ending fight in the, middle of the uh, in the middle of the map. So Euthermal prioritizing what he focused on. As more and more libs coming up, I really feel like we need to see some Corruptors. And actually, we already have Corruptors on the map, so... That is there. Is Euthermal a double drop on the bottom side? <laughs> no, there's no space for the Marauder. It can't take itself into two different parts. Hey, I really like these drops. Definitely feels like the sort of thing that helps out a lot in this stage. And gets himself an Ultra kill here as well. So even at the... You know, even when it comes to you know, the units that have traded out, he gets a few drones. He actually does okay trading with units as well. Oh, this little bit of bio is going to split up. I like it. Again, he knows the meters are out at the top side, so splitting units up a little bit. I mean, a few units spawn here, but I kill a queen or two, right? I mean, again, it's just forcing units to move around. It's forcing Sue to look in different places. As Ethan will save this medevac, he's going to attempt to expand to the bottom left, but there's creep spread then position, so Ethan will have to go and deal with it. Again, Sue has just traded well enough. Again, that one big fight that went his way. Kind of offsets the fact that Euthermal was trading very well up until that point. And then, of course, with how much Sue was mining, it's been one of those scenarios where Sue has been able to truly just stay in an advantageous spot. A few Marines on the way down to clean up that Overlord on the Natural. Well, not the Natural, right, but the alternative Natural, I suppose. The Natural on the bottom side of the map. But Sue's also taking the bottom side of the map, so Sue's about to get every single base here. I mean, this could turn into full-on split map kind of trading. Ah, uh, these Widow Mines already set off. Even more links shown up. In fairness, these mules seem to have had a pretty good time before they get cleaned out, and they will just retreat over to... I mean, this base over here would not be a bad choice. What's he thermal looking like in terms of his army to fight this? Feels like his army must be a little bit all over the place. His Widow Mines are going off on Overseers once again, and that consistently feels like it's been a problem for you, Thermal, in this game. A lot of these fights have been very kind of focused on... You know, Widowmind's not really connecting on what they needed to, and especially fights where he needed some good connections. Some Banelings show up out of nowhere down there, and, well, the Mutas and Corruptors still around. They should be able to get rid of some of these libs. A couple of Vikings show up. An Ultra on the bottom side. I mean, the gold base is pretty much ransacked and pushed away. Three Vikings to try and fight this. I mean, he will lose an orbital command. He can get this base down once he cleans up those few Zerglings. Obviously, that's not easily done just yet. 
Ethermal holds on once more, but Sue just has too much in the bank and Ethermal. Okay, he realizes there's too much in the bank. He'll type out GG and Sue will take the first game of this series despite a really good Ethermal start. Sue comes out on games for you as we jump into Everdream in the bottom left hand side does take the 1-0 advantage it is Sue top right our blue Terran from Team Liquid is Euthermal So what do we think for game two? You thermal will not proxy. I honestly kind of felt like it might have been coming. Maybe still something a little bit aggressive here. Maybe something along the lines of, you know, I, I mean, we can we can absolutely be talking about a. Um, we can absolutely be talking about a. Um, like a hellbat attack or something, right? Something uh, along those lines. Correct setup on the racks in the main base. So Thermal's already going to start up with a bit of a different opener. So he's going to go Reactor first. Right, so one of the builds Thermal likes to do in this matchup off Reactor first is actually to not go Hellions, but instead go to like a very high Marine count. And then he actually goes into this kind of 2-1. It's, it's what you would expect to be a 2-1-1, one, one, but it's actually a 1-1-1. One, 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 double Medivac with um, 14 Marines and a Widow Mine. So that's a fairly popular choice from Ethermal. Um, it doesn't have to be this. This could absolutely be, you know, a good amount of Marines into Hellions. And then again, that supports the idea of maybe a Hellbat attack. As that factory comes on in. So let's see what Ethermal does with this. The power of the 14 Marine drop is it doesn't have Stim, but it hits earlier than a 2-1-1. And it looks like a 2-1-1. So it has, it's one of those builds which can absolutely catch the Zerg off guard when they think they know what they're doing. And then actually it shows up early and they're just like, oh, I don't have anything to really deal with this. And it does have some weaknesses, but weaknesses that aren't really abused in the current meta of the game. You know, the meta where so many of these Zergs are going for a faster Lair and a faster Spire. There is double gas. So we will see a starboard. What's the factory going to do? Okay, factory goes to the reactor. So we will see Hellions. And then what does the barracks want to do? Does the barracks want to build up a tech lab? Are we going to see the starport just going to be barren of upgrades? Okay, he's continuing to build marines. Again, this could be like an eight marine drop with Hellion support. Again, the other option, you could absolutely make this a hellbat attack. Or oh, because the starport's not going to have an add-on, it could build its own tech lab and go into a fusion core and a battle cruiser. But I feel like then you're not making use of these early marines, and I feel like that's a real shame. You know, especially when you give up your Reaper, so you don't have any early game information otherwise. You can see Sue as well. You never build a Reaper. You never scouted me. I'm going to go super early Rotoran. And I feel like this isn't just a Rotoran to be like, oh yeah, I want to defend whatever you're up to. This is a Rotoran which absolutely says, hey, you know, let's fight. Let's get aggressive. There's the fusion course. This will be a BC after a Medivac. So eventual battle cruise is going to be a long time until that's ready. I mean, when you compare that to when the Roaches are going to hit, BC is going to be, what, halfway done at best? There you go, uh, Medivac loading up seven Marines flying across the map as the Overlord's hanging out overhead. The Hellions are going to be there to pick off a Link. Again, it's hard to necessarily make the right read on this still as Sue, but I feel like the thing is you don't necessarily need to make a read. Oh, he has no Link speed, though. Because he has a lot of roaches, so he has plenty of roaches. He's going to have Marines dropping into the main base. Slow Links for the Marines to kite against. I mean, that's actually kind of fine. And then the Hellions are going to burn by the Roaches, so they should get some decent damage done here. I mean, this entire natural mineral line is going to be on fire, and the Roaches, well, okay, they're just going to continue across the map. I mean, you still look to take the Marines back across the map as he gets 11 drones so far, and there's more drones here still stacked up. He can absolutely get more. 13, 
He's gonna get 15. He's gonna die for a couple of the lower health ones. He gets to 16 in the end. But the Roaches are arriving across the map. BC, 40 seconds from completion. But he isn't done yet, right? There's just no units here to really fight these last few Marines. A few Lings finally popping out. The Queen's coming into position. 20 drones killed. Sue needs some serious damage to make up for 20 workers lost. Now, he was droning before this attack came, before his road just got across the map. How much can he do? He cancels the third CC, obviously a big part of slowing down a future economy here. You thermal will allow Sue to kind of somewhat run up this ramp before he raises the depots. Kind of wants to say, yeah, you know, if you want to come up here and cap my production, you do that. Battle Cruise is going to pop, and the Battle Cruiser will eventually clean up here, but eventually is a very important word. How many units do you lose while this BC plays cleanup in the main base? Well, Siege Tank pops out. This becomes interesting because you've actually got the meta back here now as well. I actually think this isn't so bad. Success EV is down. The slings now have speed. They're going to run to the natural. That might be the bigger issue than anything else. Ethan was quick to pull the SCVs away. He's down by eight workers as it stands. Remember, one of the big things about a BC opener, though, is you'll always have the battle cruisers to go across the map for follow-up damage. Roach has dealt with in the main 32 SCVs to 50 drones. He teleports straight into the main where there's three queens. I mean, he should be able to get some drones out of this still. He gets one. Wow, only one drone. But the BC stays fairly healthy. A second BC on the way. I mean, the biggest part of this is there's no Spire anytime soon. Lair is just on the way up now. So without a Spire, there's eventually going to be a problem where... You just don't have anything but queens and spores to fight the BCs. And that generally becomes very tough to handle. Mm, can you almost get enough done with that second BC showing up is the real question. Two BCs versus like six-ish queens. It's totally possible to do something with this. It's totally possible to do something with it, but... Yeah, it's going to be a tough one to... Uh, It is just going to be a tough one, right? I mean, you're down 30 workers, so you need to do something. I mean, he is double expanding. I actually like this, right? Two CCs. That's going to rebuild that work account much faster. Get an excess of minerals because he didn't take his gases or mine from the gases to go into the mech play like he wanted to. I kind of, honestly, I kind of like that part of it for you, Thermal. As he comes across the map, Sue is in a mega supply block. What Sue actually got out on the ground? 18 lings against Hellbats? Because there's an armory down, right? There's no armory? Ah, okay, so just Hellions. Uh, well, he's got siege tanks, I guess. Sorry, I actually thought these were... For some reason in my head, I just instinctively thought these were, uh... Hellions or Hellbats in the medevac. That's why I was saying Hellbats in the first place. But then there was no armory. The Marines did not make it across. We do have some Hellions in production. The BCs will protect the tanks. There's so many Queens, though. The problem is there's so many Queens. And there's just... Well, what really is there here, right? As the Crows of Falcon X. BC's just aren't enough. I mean, he cleans up a lot of the links, but look at how much money Sue has. As the spy is about to finish, there's going to be so many corruptors on the way. Now, uh, Ethermal's, what, 16 workers behind now? Third CC in position, going to move a fourth into location. If that stays to be, you know, if that keeps on being true, then that's great. I mean, Fens, there's not a lot of ground army here, right? It's mostly just corruptors. So what can Sue do to deny this fourth base in the near future? Well, maybe not that much. This CC looked like it took a turn to avoid the Overlord. It's going to go to the forward position now. BCs will get healed up. And a Hellion drop to Sue's main base is going to be the next step of this from New Thermal. And two extra factories in the main. So it's going to be five factories in total. The armories are set up in the main base. And yeah, those four Hellions heading into the main. Going to unload and start to run through to... Took away a bunch of drones. And get one drone right away, then lifts up. And again, so far, the Corruptors haven't had much to do, right? As you thermal, we'll see approaches, you'll see links. It is actually missile and melee upgrades. This medevac goes down. It's a little bit of a shame because I don't think you thermal really has what he needs to hold against the big Roach Ravager Corruptor attack just yet. The only good thing about this is that maybe Sue doesn't commit in with only plus one uh, with a plus one missile still in the way. He has just got Roach speed, and it doesn't look like he's interested in continuing forward. So that's a pretty big positive as the Corruptors will move into the main. They're going to set up some Corsic Spray, going to work their way through this factory. Ethelmo's just going to GG out. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, Ethelmo's in a rough spot, but I didn't think he was going to leave the game right there dead. But Ethelmo, GG's. In